what up nerds in this video i'm going to be covering events in godot with c sharp and godot terms these are called signals but c sharp also has a native event system so we'll be covering that as well now if you want to support this channel you can check out my steam developer page on nalpal studios uh, i'll link it in the description below as well so Godot has a built-in event system called Signals, and this is their implementation of the observer design pattern. Now, I won't go too much into that, but if you want to read more about it, I have linked a resource in the description below as well. So the main idea is that one object will hook into another object and subscribe to a signal or event. Then when that signal broadcasts or em emits in Godot's terms, then anything that was actually subscribed to that signal will execute code. Think of it kind of like a radio. Multiple drivers can listen to one radio station and that radio station broadcasts music. So the drivers can listen in and respond how they want, such as turning the volume up or down or even changing the radio station. Now, in this example, the radio station is the signal or event and the driver is the subscriber. So uh, C Sharp has these events built into the language as a language construct. And there are a few different ways to go about it in C Sharp. And which one you use is completely up to you. Now, the multiple ways to do it, that you have delegates event and uh, events, really. Uh, and then any, anything else is kind of a wrapper around these two things. Now, a real quick uh, overview of this scene that I have set up just for demonstration purposes. I just have a root node and a child node just to kind of have two scripts in the scene and go over what I need to go over. So let's take a look at some code. When we want to define custom signals inside of Godot with C Sharp, what we need here is the signal attribute. And then we want these to be delegate with a return type of void and something very important is that at the end of your delegate event handler has to be there as a post fix godot will actually automatically chop that part off when we are actually connecting to it however next we also have the delegate and event approach this one isn't seen as much as some of these other ones but this is pretty much what happens when you use some of these later examples in this approach what you would be doing is actually subscribing to this example event right here and uh, but this setup does have some issues uh it's a bit more verbose than what people would want to do and a really big issue is that you can potentially assign a the delegate to be a new delegate so what that would cause is the previous delegate to lose all of its subscribers and we don't want that but when we use an event here uh, like so it prevents us from even using the assignment operator now Another problem that this actually has is it exposes the actual delegate to outside uh, instances. And generally speaking, you don't want things that shouldn't be exposed to the public to be well exposed. And that's something that the event handler actually can come in handy for because it helps with the verbosity and encapsulation aspects. So this is pretty much doing exactly what the lines above it do, but it does it behind the scenes. And on top of that, you get the, the extra encapsulation of not being able to have an outside class actually raise these events. So what, what this means is you couldn't go into another object and try and get its event handler, uh, type and invoke it you have to interact with the object through a well-defined api and this is generally preferred because you don't want outside objects mutating the state of 
your object. You should tr always try to have objects maintain their own state. One drawback of the event handlers, however, is in order to define something that has multiple arguments, you do need to wrap it inside of a custom class, which I will show you in a second. But you can also just throw in one, uh, one argument and it'll be fine. Now, if you need to have multiple arguments, you want a class that inherits from event args and then you just define your properties. And that's pretty much the gist. So after this, we actually have the action type. And this is a pretty much just a shorthand way of declaring a void delegate. So it would be the same thing as doing this up here, except it's all wrapped up in one. Now, if you actually want to have multiple arguments, you just put it in between these angled brackets and you can have up to, I believe it was 16 uh, parameters. So this is uh, an approach that you can go with if you don't wanna handle having to have a custom class with multiple arguments. And finally, we have the func type. Now, up to this point, we've only covered delegates that don't have a return type, so everything is returning void. Now, the func type is one that actually does have a return type, and that return type is dictated by the final parameter in between the angle brackets. So in this case, it's going to be an integer. So in, in terms of Godot, imagine if signals could actually have a return type, and that's generally how you would go about using this. Now, I have these two lines here just to demonstrate that this is the exact same as doing this. So it kind of just reduces that extra verbosity. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you can actually broadcast all of these and i've created a little method here just to go through uh, broadcasting all of the events when you're doing custom signals so things that are godot friendly and they're designed to interrupt with godot you want to use this emit signal method and then signal name dot whatever your signals name is so up here you see I have custom signal event handler and customs well in signal with args event handler and as you can see as I said before it will chop off the event handler name then with everything else you with all the native C sharp things you just use the invoke method and this is the same thing as if you were just emitting the signal the example event which is up here we just call the invoke, so on and so forth. And with event handlers, this first argument is actually the instance of an object that is actually invoking this event. Typically speaking, it is good practice to also pass along which object is emitting the signal or broadcasting the event. So with event handler, this comes as a requirement. Now, if you see here, we have the event args.empty. That is because when you actually call invoke on an event handler, it expects a sender and an argument of type event args. If you don't have any arguments to pass along, you would pass in event args.empty. So up here, I don't have anything to pass along. So I'm just passing the event args dot empty. And then all these other ones is pretty much how you would expect it. You're just passing in the additional arguments because up here we say where we want to pass a node. So we're passing the node and then the multiple arguments. And this is just an inline object really creation. All right. So, and then down here, we also just do regular old invokes. All right, and then last but not least, 
we're going to switch over to the root node because this is where all of our connections are happening. And as you can see, we are connecting in the exact same way, no matter which way we are going about doing things. So after all my connections, I'm going to call my method to invoke all of these. And then here's a bunch of methods that I defined. And here are some example one, here are example ones that can actually return some values. So when we switch over here and we run it, let me go ahead and close this out. You can see that all of these actually ran. All right. Now, one thing to note at the time of recording, there are some issues with custom signals in C Sharp with Godot in that sometimes they don't auto disconnect themselves uh, like they should. However, if you use a built-in signal in C Sharp, then it should be fine. Now, in order to actually disconnect, we just use minus equals. All right, and I'm putting this in the uh, pre-delete pre notification because it kind of acts as a destructor. So it's a safe place to unsubscribe. Now, last but not least, Something to note is C Sharp's native built-in event system is faster than Godot's signals. Now, some drawbacks are that you don't actually have any editor support with them. And what I mean by that is if we actually look at child and then go to the signals, we don't see our custom, like our built-in native events that we created, right? So if this is something that you do want, it might kind of lean you more towards using custom signals. So there is that kind of trade-off. Now also with C Sharp's native events, there is typically a bit more required legwork in that you really should be unsubbing from the events as needed. Uh, but because of these, some of the issues that surround custom signals in C Sharp with Godot, you might find that you'll be doing that anyway. So it might not be a deciding factor for you. Now, if you have any questions about anything with the event systems and when you should use one uh, over the other, please let me know in the comments. And that's pretty much it. Later, nerds.